It's day 122 of the project and today I'm taking a trip down memory lane and revisiting not one but two retro classics from the house of Paco Rabanne. I'll also be comparing the two side by side and letting you know which one I like the best and which one I'm probably more likely to wear in 2022. So in the blue corner all the way back from 2001 we have Ultraviolet and in the red corner from 2008 we have Ultra Red. Let the fight begin. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to another episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is day 122 of my Fragrance 365 project where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. So today's featured scents are these two little beauties from the house of Paco Rabanne. Ultraviolet was a huge hit when it came out uh, way back in 2001 and I blasted through a couple of bottles of this one uh, during that first year uh, but I haven't worn it ever since which is probably now going on for 20 years since I last uh, worn this one so I'm looking forward to revisiting it uh, but during that time uh, Ultra Red was released in 2008 and this one kind of totally escaped my attention and up until a few weeks ago I'd never smelled it however I saw them both on Amazon for £30 each uh, for these 100ml 100, 100 bottle sizes and I thought it'd be kind of rude not to snap them up and compare the two for you all today. Yeah, so into the presentation and starting with the boxes, uh, we've got a metallic colourway, uh, we've got the, the blue for the ultraviolet and then we've got a, 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 met, a metallic red, like a, de a deep red there for the ultra red. Uh, both feature a white band that runs all the way around the boxes there, uh, but that contains the name of the fragrance on the front. At the bottom there's the name of the house which is embossed in a chrome chrome finish and we also have the size and the concentration at the bottom of the uh, box and on the top there's uh, a little packer band motif there it's just stamped into the top and at the bottom of the boxes we have the usual batch code and the barcode the bottles come in this quirky design uh, with this large front piece here this plastic panel on the front that's actually the uh, the spray trigger which feels really comfortable in your hand um, just until you need to spray it and then you've got to unless you've got like double jointed wrists you can't bend it enough to kind of spray it on it, it becomes really uncomfortable so what you have to do then is just spin it round and, and apply it with you with your thumb uh, but having said that uh, it was a, a it was a super cool design back in the day and I still think it looks pretty smart today there's the uh, the name of the house that um, and the name of the fragrance that just runs down the front there on the sprayer, and it's encased in like a, a chrome surround if you can see it on there. Uh, we've got clear clear glass, so you can see the level of the juice. As you can see, I've not used much of this yet. Um, and then on, underneath there, you've got like a, a a bit of a glass, a bit of a chrome panel that contains some more product information. You've got your uh, size and your concentration on there as well as your batch code. So I'll just give myself a quick spray of each one of these on each hand just so that I can compare the two. So I've got the red on this hand and the ultraviolet on this hand uh, and we'll see how these, one, uh, these ones fare up against each other. But in the meantime, let's take a look at these fragrances in the note breakdown. Yes, into the note breakdown and starting off with the ultraviolet, the top notes in this one are mint and black pepper. In the mid, we've got vetiver and oak moss. And in the base, there's amber and vanilla. And in the ultra red, the top note is blood orange. In the mid, there's praline and tonka bean. And in the base, there's vanilla and patchouli. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, we've got two totally different and contrasting scent profiles. And I've got to say that these two open up with very different aromas. The ultraviolet opens up very fresh and green with the mint uh, really standing out. And I can also definitely pick up on the oak moss and the vetiver, which produces like a dry grassy accord. 
The amber and the vanilla in the bass bring a touch of sweetness and depth, which balances out these sharper fresh notes. But it's more of a, a fresh green aroma that I get from this in the opening, whereas the ultra red is uh, about 50% sweeter with a really fruity character. This one reminds me of Dior Homme Sport uh, with the blood orange note taking centre stage. It, re it smells really juicy and uplifting and it's more like a fruity soft drink rather than a fragrance. The praline, the tonka bean and the vanilla uh, just dial it up to number 10 on the sweetness scale but it's the zesty blood orange and the patchouli that bring it back from being uh, too sickly or cloying. In the dry down they both become I would say quite powdery and if I hadn't seen the note breakdowns I'd swear that both of these contained uh, the notes of either iris or violet or some kind of floral note because they do produce a lipsticky kind of powdery vibe. Uh, but none of them smell feminine, uh, they're both quite masculine, uh, they're both very mass appealing, versatile designer fragrances uh, that I think have just a slight um, synthetic quality to them uh, and they are a little bit linear but I would say they're super playful, very likeable and uh, they will get your compliments wherever you go. Yeah, I'd say even though the ultraviolet is more fresh than the ultra red, um, it's probably more suitable to wear in colder weather and for like nights out. The ultra red is more of a sports fragrance and one that you'd wear probably casually on a warmer day. I'd also say that the ultraviolet is a tad more masculine with the amber and the green notes giving it a slightly more sexy and seductive character. Uh, these are both fragrances that I'd say are probably best suited to younger guys though in their uh, late teens or early 20s. They're very fun and playful, uh, but in my opinion, they do lean uh, slightly on the juvenile side. So if you're over 30 and you're still wearing either of these two, uh, you need to give them to your son and treat yourself to a bottle of uh, Killian's Black Phantom. Yeah, the performance on these two I would say is pretty comparable, but the Ultra Red uh, definitely projects better for the first 10-15 minutes or so. Uh, when I've just sprayed them both on the back of my hands, the Ultra Red is the one that I could smell uh, coming off my skin much more than the Ultra Violet. But I did give these two a full wearing yesterday and applied two sprays to each hand and two sprays on the sleeve of my jumper. And I got around about five or six hours out of the Ultra Red uh, and about a further hour or so out of the Ultra Violet. But I do seem to remember that the Ultra Violet being a bit of a beast back in the day. Uh, but after the six hour mark yesterday, it had all but faded on my skin, but I could still detect both of them on my sleeve of my jumper. I've read some reviews on Fragrantica where people are, are claiming that, that, that these have faded after like three minutes and they, they don't last at all, but that is absolute total and utter tosh. Um, somebody even said on there that, that, that talking about the 2020 reformulations when it was discontinued in 2017, so please don't give any credence to the uh, comments on Fragrantica. Uh, and as from today, I'm stopping reading and wasting my time with them. Um, but these... I would say they're going to give you about six hours plus if you apply a few sprays on fabric as well as your skin um, with a decent projection that I think will get you noticed and get you complimented. Both of these are really nice smelling fragrances, but I would say that the Ultra Red is the one that I'd choose to wear more in 2022 if I had to pick a favourite. Because to my nose, it's the more modern smelling one out of the, out of the two of these. But then again, I don't know if that's just because I, I'm reminded of wearing ultraviolet like 20 years ago and the ultra red is, is a new experience to me. Uh, but I would say that this one is just comes across now a touch less modern smelling than this one. Um, but if you are a student and you're on a budget and you can get your hands on either of these two for £30 a bottle, then I'd say that both are super solid pickups at that price. Both are great value for money and therefore get a solid 8 out of 10 from me. Yes, yeah, so once again, that's about it for today's Scent of the Day. Uh, in the next episode, I'll be talking about another cracker from the house of Isimiyake that's now pretty difficult to find, uh, but I'll be telling you not only where to pick it up from, uh, but where you can get a 50% discount on it as well. So don't forget to tune in for that one. 
If you found uh, this video useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. It's also great to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your critiques, and all of the fragrances that feature in the 365 project. So keep your comments coming down in the comments section. So as always, thank you very much once again for tuning into this episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye-bye for now.